Welcome back to the shop. I'm Dave and this week I'm continuing to work on this 1952 Dodge M37. This week I got it reversed back in the shop and that's so I can get, uh, get a little space behind her so I can start working on this windshield. So I got the windshield dug out and I'm going to start working on uh, cleaning this up, getting some new seals in it, getting her painted. And also I'm hoping to dig this cab roof out. This is the Arctic top that came with uh, the Canadian version of these M37s. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lengthen it behind this B pillar to the back about 8 inches. That will match up with the 8 inch extension that I placed on this cab over on this side. Now the height of this cab measures a little over 27 inches in height. And uh, that's in a danger zone for how tall my shop roof is. So 27 inches, as you can see, is just uh, just up there a little higher than I'd like it to be. Anyhow, what my plan is, is I'm going to eventually move this truck back about uh, maybe three or four feet. And I'm going to use up this nice little space in, uh, in between the rafters here. And uh, I'll work away at that with a game plan while I work on this windshield. So I gotta say that I think this windshield's in pretty great shape, and I'm not being sarcastic for it being 70 years old. Uh, this is the outside. It's just showing because of, you know the paint's been flipping off and all that stuff. But on the other side, it's in pretty good shape. I don't think that I'll have to, uh, uh, well, you know, that's how she goes. There'll be a couple spots I might have to touch up. Oh well. So anyways, I got my reference drawing here and I'm going to start to tear the windshield down and catalog some of the parts and then um, get her sanded up, new seals, and uh, put her together. Windshield frame installed. So this lower windshield seal goes in as three units. You got your main and then you got these uh, cowl seals on each side. Next up is the windows. All right, so this is the driver's side windshield and 
There's a few parts. You got your uh, three side seal that goes around the perimeter here. You got your new or your vacuum operated windshield wipers. They do that. And there's a hinge. The hinge part is uh, just up here. And I got this one to free up before I tore the windshield down. But uh, I should tear it all the way down so I can uh, clean all the old rust out of it and, you know, just make it nice. Just mark it up so don't so don't lose track of which side they're on. <coughs> okay. So this is a standard windshield glass. Well, it's not standard, it's it might be standard. Uh, I did find out that it was tempered at least, so I'm not too worried about it just shattering on me and ruining my entire day. Oh. But it is encased in this metal frame here, and the metal frame is at least 70 years old at this point, and time has not been very kind to it. So there's a lot of rust in spots that don't look like they have rust in them yet, until we get probably underneath this seal and find, uh, find all that. Anyways, let's tear this apart. So I'm usually wearing my uh, well, my overalls when I'm working out here, but today it's hotter than a three dollar pistol, so I'm in uh, I'm in shorts and uh, work boots. So what I have read online about uh, rebuilding these windshields is that uh, you shouldn't waste your time with this channel. You should, like restoring it, pulling the pulling the seals out, things like that. Uh, a lot of the material that I've found says uh, <coughs> says that you should just buy a new windshield channel and don't worry about the rest of this. Rather than like what you're seeing me do anyways. So this is the seal, and this one is going fantastic so far. Uh, I did the passenger side up, oh, probably a couple days ago, and it's uh, it faced the ocean most of its life. And I was getting about, uh, I was pulling about two inches of this stuff out every about five minutes, so it was quite a, quite an evening process. There we go. That's the familiar struggle right there. So this is a little channel in here. Uh, get rid of that silicone. So it slides into the channel, it has two legs on each side, and the idea is that you stuff it in this channel on each side, and then it'll, it'll stick. Who knows it sticks, especially if you mix it with some rust. 
Oh. Doesn't mean it's leak proof. So I did get it with a mixture of a 90 degree pick and a very small flat, flat bladed screwdriver. Sometimes you can uh, get her up on edge, put the tiny flat screwdriver in or standard if you will, and then just tap on it and pry it up. This last 20, 20 odd inches is probably going to take me a little while. So I'll uh, I can put it on time lapse or I don't know how I'm gonna edit this yet. But stay tuned. So I've cleaned them with a razor and made sure that they dry fit inside the frames. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I got this uh, fast carry urethane windshield adhesive. Uh, it says I got a little bit of working time and it should be ready to go in probably about 50 minutes or so. It says that it uh, cures better in humidity and I got lots of that today. So uh, got my protective gear on just in case I get all over my uh, all over myself. Got my mother on speed dial, and let's just jump into it. All right, so I got both windshields in and installed and glued in and whatnot. Uh, my poor caulking gun was giving me a lot of trouble. It was a little harder to come out of the tube than I anticipated and I ended up squishing the, squishing the handle pretty good. So hopefully it holds out for the rest of this job and then I will uh, dispose of the whole thing. All right, so next up is this three-sided seal. So this goes around the bottom and up the sides and I'm gonna work my way at putting these in. Well, I got the seals on. So first time I put these on backwards. Um, so the way that this goes in is this is the out, this face is outside. And you see how it's got that step there. And then when it closes up against the windshield, it'll, the windshield frame, it'll push and make a better seal as opposed to this way where it, where it has more give. So anyways, that's the way it's gonna go on. Over here, the windshield frame was rotted out pretty badly. So what I did was I put in some of that urethane, the same stuff that I sealed this windshield up with, put it in the crack there, and then I used this uh, this masking tape, this painter's tape, to just hold it tight there. So uh, it'll cure once I uh, get her installed. So I made an error earlier. Uh, this is going to be flipped around so it's this is the proper direction. That way you got the seal for the forward facing. But a little bit of relief for the for the door here when it when it rolls up. All right, and got the windshield glass inside the windshield frame, and then it makes a pretty good seal. I'll have to put a little urethane up in the top uh, above this uh, above this hinge so the water doesn't go in. I'll do that a bit later on. But as you can see, you can undo this and then pushes the glass out. And then since the seals are really tight, 
you kind of need two hands to get that to lock back but you get the idea that's one of those quick jobs you think it's only going to take about a day to do and then i think it ended up taking me three or four <laughs> so now that's done it's hard top time Where the rust is, is right where this channel is, across there, and goes up to this. And it's covered with this insulation. Um, glass is uh, siliconed in from the looks of it. So I think my first step is to pull all the insulation out of it, pull the glass out, repair the cab, and then, and then cut the cab. That's my guess and probably fix where this B-pillar is bent. That'll make it a little easier to go on the truck. Sounds like a plan? Good. All right, little status update. That's the patina I was talking about a little earlier and how I'll have to fix that up. And then I've identified some more over there. To pull, it, to pull uh, this stuff off, I've been using a heat gun on the backside. Not really caring too much about the paint because I'll have to do body work on it eventually anyways. But it uh, seems like as soon as you get her hot, she'll pull off. Pulls off similarly to if you're skinning a pork belly and you're pulling the skin off, comes off a little like that. If you know, you know. So I was able to get those parts done so far and I'll have to take the rest off. So I'll check in with you later. Okay, well I got most of the headliner off. I was able to use the heat gun for the back part here, but where it spent most of its life underneath the sun, this was a little harder to come off and I wasn't able to get it with the heat gun. What I was able to do was take a wire brush on a grinder and grind it off, leaving behind some of the some of the adhesive, but maybe uh, maybe I'll be able to dissolve that away with, I don't know, aircraft stripper or something like that. So while I was wire wheeling away uh, the headliner, I was able to uncover a couple of problem spots. This is the front corner there, and over here I got some problems. Uh, back right in front of this B pillar on the passenger side. I got a little bit of repair to do and Everything underneath this rear window is is junk And then coming around to the driver's side B pillar. I see that there 
there was some uh, repair done maybe in the past at some point but there's a good amount of body fill uh, here and I'll probably I don't know I'm gonna keep busy at it I think but uh, it's pretty it's pretty thick it's gonna it's gonna take a little bit of doing I think and then this is a better view of what the back of it looks like uh, it had been skim coated well probably not skim coated but uh, there's a fair amount of body fill that covered a lot of this so I'm gonna replace that all with fresh metal anyways I think when I started this video I said I was gonna get this cab on that truck so let's do that so the plan is I'm gonna get this up in the air probably put it up there somewhere above the rafters I'm gonna back this bad boy in and set it down on top oh look I got some more holes all right so we got the hard top up in the air and and I got the truck all set up with some masking tape uh, on the back and also the front that way I don't scratch the paint that I just spent so much time uh, putting on. And uh, because the cab will probably come on and off a couple of times, that'll lead a little bit of protection there. I need a bigger shop. The pin on the far side B pillar is a little bent, so I'm going to bring it up and see if I can make that one go through. So this hard top is not too heavy. It's probably like it's probably like 75 pounds right now, especially without the glass in it. Well, at 
Okay, so now when we're fixing that, we get her off. Close view pillars to touch down. And the load's off of it. Alright. Well, most of it is, anyhow. So I pulled the windshield forward just a little bit. I unhooked it just to see if she fits square and all that. And it looks like it does in this corner. On that co on that corner over there, it's a little high, but nothing you can't uh, nothing you can't just like screw it down and lock it in. This is a uh, this is how much space we had before. <sighs> Pretty tight in there. And then look at all this room I'm gonna have for activities. So now everybody's curious, just like me, how tall is this thing gonna be? I'm up here at the top. I got this uh, five foot level just chilling on the top of this roof. And I'll get the, uh, I'll get the measuring tape out. And measuring tape from the floor. All the way up to the bottom of the level. 88 and a quarter, maybe 88 and a third. So seven foot, seven foot four and a quarter. So that means six inches got to come out of that door for it to go outside. But I also got to bear in mind that this isn't quite sitting on on the on the uh, cab very well, and there's about an inch and three quarter there. So it's going to be 86 and a half or seven foot two and seven foot two and a half. Still a big truck for most uh, pickup measures. But anyways, I'm gonna leave it for there for today, and next week I'm gonna tackle uh, lengthening and fixing the rest of this cab up.